the Committee on Civil Service, Government Reorganization, and Professional Regulation. I now call this meeting to order. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Risa Ontiveros, who is here with us today. Alam kung marami ka pang gagawin, but uh, thank you for the time. So I now uh, I declare the presence of a quorum. Okay, uh, we are now having uh, an organizational uh, meeting of the committee as a preliminary uh, to the public hearings that we will conduct in the coming days. Afterward, we will be briefed by the Civil Service Commission and uh, Professional Regulation Commission on their respective le legislative priorities. Firstly, may I uh, formally put into the record that the committee is uh, composed of nine members. This representation was uh, elected as chairperson with the following members, Senator Pia Cayetano, Senator Wynne Gachalian, Senator Cynthia Villar, Senator, Senator Rapi Tulfo, Senator Jingoy Estrada, Senator Mark Villar, and Senator JV Victor Ercito. And of course, uh, Senator Riza Ontiveros. Uh, Senator Pia is designated as the vice chairperson. The following officers of the Senate are our ex officio members President Pro Tempore Loren Legarda. Majority Leader Joel Binaleba and Minority Leader Aquilino Pimentel III. Now, may I hear a motion uh, from any of the members present for the adoption of the body of the rules uh, of the Senate and rules of procedure governing inquiries in ideal legislation as the um, internal rules of the, of the committee? Mr. Chair. Yes, Madam. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I move to adopt the rules uh, governing the work of the Committee on Civil Service, Government Reorganization, and Professional Regulation. I so move, Mr. Chair. Okay, there's a motion for the adoption of the rules of the Senate and the rules of the procedure governing inquiries in aid of legislation as our committee's internal rules. Is uh, there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Let us now uh, recognize our committee secretary, Ms. Gina Del, uh, Del Lomes, to state the duties, powers, and jurisdiction of this committee. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman and honorable members of the committee. Our guests, resource persons, ladies and gentlemen, for the record, the jurisdiction of the committee includes all matters relating to the civil service and the status of officers and employees of the government, including their appointment, discipline, retirement, their compensation privileges, benefits and incentives, implementation of the constitutional provisions on the rights of government workers to form and join labor organizations, public sector labor management relations, and collective negotiation agreements, the regulation of and admission to, and the practice of the professions, and reorganization of the government or any or any of its branches or instrumentalities, all human resource development programs pertaining to the government and all other matters relating to the bureaucracy. As provided under Rule 10, Section 13, Paragraph 7 of the Rules of the Senate. Uh, thank you, Comsec uh, okay. Gina. Now, uh, before we open the floor for briefing, allow me to congratulate uh, CSC Chair Carlo Nograles for his uh, confirmation yesterday before the Commission on Appointments. Now, I would like to stress my commitment in uh, ensuring that under this humble representation's leadership, we will uh, continue to pursue building an efficient, people-centered and uh, merit-based civil service and globally competitive 
and credible Filipino professionals. Napapanoon na napapanoon po ang uh, organizational meeting na ito dahil naibigay na ng ating mahal na Pangulong Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. ang uh, budget proposal para sa 2023 na makapagbibigay katuparan sa mga sa mga inilihad niya sa kanyang kauna-unahang sona. Uh, it will lay the foundation for the legacy he intends to build and uh, we will set the tenor and directions uh, for the Filipino people as we navigate this uh, new normal. The president has set an agenda for prosperity where, where there is economic transformation towards in inclusivity and sustainability. Uh, we envision a more efficient and uh, streamlined bureaucracy. We envision the Filipino professional uh, competing and thriving globally and being able to work and move freely. Uh, the plight of uh, our Filipino professionals has been uh, greatly challenged uh, in the last two years. Hence, there is an urgent need for us to respond uh, to measures uh, advancing their welfare. As an example, I would like to put on the spotlight on our uh, teachers. We all know of the sacrifices and extra effort they made during the, the pandemic. And just recently, during the, uh, during the opening of classes, we saw in the news, uh, news pictures of our teachers forging on, uh, amidst the floods and, uh, and the shortage of equipment. Ang bawat sakripisyo ng ating mga guro ay patunay lamang ng uh, kanilang hindi matatawarang dedikasyon at uh, pagganap sa kanilang tungkulin. Uh, uh, ilang mga guro na po ang dumulog sa ating tanggapan para humingi ng suporta at tulong. And that is why I was the first to file this uh, Congress, Senate Bill Number no. 22, which uh, seeks to institutionalize the, the grant of teaching supplies allowance for public school teachers, which already passed on third reading in the last Congress. We also filed the uh, Senate Bill number 267, which seeks to uh, upgrade the salary grade of our public school teachers. We'll make sure that through this uh, committee, we, uh, the, the welfare of the Filipino professional is prioritize and that our quality standards are not uh, only upheld, but uh, lifted higher. Sa pagbangon po natin sa, mula sa pandemya, bukod sa mahalagang matutukan natin ang servisyong uh, naibibigay ng ating mga kawani sa publiko, importante rin uh, maalagaan natin ang ating mga government employees. Indeed, our human resource is one of the, the most important assets of our government. With all these aims to, uh, in our heart, uh, the, commi the committee uh, looks forward to the cooperation of all stakeholders to advance measures for a responsive uh, governance as we usher into the new better normal. Maraming salamat. Senator Risa, would you like to deliver an opening uh, statement? No, thank you. I apologize for the echo. I'll try to fix it on my end, Mr. Chair. Salamat. Okay. Thank you, Senator Risa. Okay. Uh, may I ask the committee secretary to acknowledge the resource persons present today? Sec, Comsec, Gina. Um, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for today's public hearing, we acknowledge the following resource persons. Uh, from the Civil Service Commission, we have the chairperson Carlo A. B. Nograles and commissioners Ryan Alvin R. Acosta, Commissioner Eileen Lourdes Lizada, also Assistant Commissioner Karin Litz Zerna. We have Director Helen Grace Ramos, Director for Office for Strategy Management, the Director for Human Resource Policies and Standards Office, Ms. Jennifer Timbol, 
Director for Integrated Resource Management Office, Ms. Noreen Gregasin. Director Catherine Del Moro, Commission Secretariat and Liaison Office. Director Cherry Berries for Examination, Recruitment and Placement Office. Um, Legislative Liaison Division, uh, Director Furley Enriquez. Ms. Mary Sharin Llamazares, also of Legislative Liaison Division, and uh, Attorney Enrico Marco Lopez, Office of Commissioner Lizada. Attorney Pops Apolinario, and uh, from Professional Regulation Commission, uh, we, we have Acting Chairperson, Honorable Jose Cueto Jr., Together with the Chief PRB Secretariat Division, Attorney Lubelica T. Bautista, Ms. Eleanor Almoro, the Chairperson of PRB uh, Professional Regulatory Board of Medicine, Ms. LCT, Chairperson or the Board of Nursing, and members of the Board of Nursing, Ms. Carmelita Dibina Gracia, Ms. Enaida Gragno, Ms. Elizabeth Lagrito, Ms. Lea Primitiva Pakis, and a member of PRB um, Physical Therapy and Occupational Therapy, Ms. Bernadette Reyes, also Mr. Raul Agustin of PRB um, Physical Therapy, Ms. Delia Pabalan, and also a member Roland Laile Duque. We also have Marilyn, uh, Chairperson Marilyn Cabal Barsa of PRB Medical Technology and member Ms. Leila Lani Florento. The Chairperson of uh, PRB Agriculture, Ms. Emma Sales, and the Director for Legal Service of the Professional Regulation Commission, Ms. Giselle Durana. That is all, um, Chairman. Mr. Chair. Yes, yes uh, Senator Riza, you're recognized. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Ito na, naayos ko na po kung ba't ako nage-echo kanina. Uh, belated din, Mr. Chair, gusto ko lang pong idagdag sa pagbati ng chair sa newly uh, confirmed chair ng Civil Service Commission. Yung akin din pong pagbati o oh, ng congratulations at mabuhay kay uh, Chair Nograles sa kanilang well-deserved uh, confirmation kahapon. So, mabuhay po, Chair, and uh, all best wishes uh, to the Commission under your leadership in partnership sa aming komite sa pamumuno din uh, ni Chair Revilla. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Senator. Uh, magandang umaga po sa lahat ng mga nagpa-unlock sa ating uh, invitasyon sa ngayong umaga. Okay, uh, we will now proceed to the presentation of the various priority legislative measures of the Civil Service Commission and the uh, and the Professional Regulation Commission, PRC, respectively. May I also take this opportunity to greet the CSC. You know, uh, as we uh, we are celebrating the Civil Service Month this month, you know? saludo po kami sa inyong mga hakbangin para mapaigi ang uh, kapakanan ng ating mga civil servants. Kaya mabuhay po kayo. Now, siguro, isanan natin. Let's start with the with the uh, chair Carlo Nograles no chairman you have the floor maraming maraming salamat chair uh, maraming maraming salamat din po sa confirmation on my appointment yesterday uh, lalong lalo na po uh, sa inyo uh, chair uh, Bong Revilla uh, kay senator Lisa Otiveros at uh, Sa kabilang dulo naman sa House of Representatives kay uh, Kong Ate Lani Mercado Revilla. Maraming maraming salamat sa lahat ng bumubuo ng CA. Thank you for this opportunity to allow me uh, to serve, to continue my service as Chair ng Civil Service Commission. At sa lahat mga civil servants, happy Civil Service Month. Hindi po ito anniversary ng Civil Service Commission kundi anniversary po ito ng lahat ng kawani ng ating uh, pamahalan. 
So thank you, um, Honorable Chair of the Committee on Civil Service, Government Reorganization, and Professional Regulation, Senator Ramon Bong Revilla Jr., Senator Lisa Ontiveros, and other uh, uh, members of the Honorable Committee, officials, guests, ladies and gentlemen, mga kababayan, good morning po sa inyo lahat. Uh, I'm here to give an overview of the Civil Service Commission as well as its priority legislative agenda. Um, if my slides can be flashed, please. Thank you. Uh, next slide. As you know, Mr. Chair, the CSC as the central human resource institution of the Philippine bureaucracy, we in the CSC have as our core purpose, uh, itong gawing lingkod bayani ang bawat kawani. And we are fueled by our core values of love of God, love for country, excellence, and integrity. And our vision is to be a globally recognized, uh, to be globally recognized as a center of excellence for strategic human resource management and organization development by cultivating partnerships, generating funds for the operations and administration of the CSC, and Ang bottom line po is professionalizing our workforce. Next slide. With regard to the legislative agenda of the Civil Service Commission, Mr. Chair, the commission actually identified one uh, top priority bill, which is an act creating the Human Resource Management Office in the local government units and defining its function as our priority bill for the 19th Congress. Itong HRMO in LGU's bill aims to create an HR department or HR office as it plays an important role in the delivery of public service through the placement of competent and credible employees and officials in the different positions in the plantilla ng mga LGUs, lalo na. And to, to do this, kailangan mag-create po tayo ng HRMO in all LGUs. The Human Resource Management Office will be mandatory uh, and created in each province, city, and first to third class municipality. Para naman po sa fourth class up to sixth class municipality, yung pag-create ng office is optional, but the, the appointment of the, to the position of officer or HRM officer Yun po yung magiging mandatory. The HRMO created in each of every LGU shall be in charge, of course, of recruitment, career development, rewards and incentives, performance management, discipline, employee relations, and the whole gamut of HRM in all in their respective LGUs. We're very fortunate that no less than uh, Senator Bong Revilla. Uh, our chair uh, of this committee uh, in the 18th Congress, nung previous Congress po, kayo po, Mr. Chair, uh, yung primary author nito. Uh, in fact, you supported our CSC version ng bill and in fact filed Senate Bill number 1020 in the 18th Congress. Uh, kanya lamang, uh, hindi siguro nagkaroon ng ano yung uh, nakulangan ng oras, kumbaga. Uh, so, naging pending siya at hindi naipasa ng 18th Congress. But we're very confident, uh, Mr. Chair, that under this 19th Congress ay maipasa na po natin. Next slide. There are other uh, bills uh, that were prioritized um, or identified by the previous commission. Kasi bagong commission po kami ngayon, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam uh, Senator, no? So, uh, ako and I'm joined by uh, Commissioner uh, Lizada and Commissioner Acosta. So, we form a new commission right now. So, we are currently studying the other bills that were identified by the previous commission. Um, and these bills uh, can be seen on the screen. No? Uh, first, of, for, first and foremost, foremost, yung Civil Service Reform Code. Uh, it's very laudable but uh, challenging also dahil uh, it's putting into one law, com one comprehensive law, all the scattered laws, issuances, executive orders relative to and related to civil service. 
But the uh, very good thing about this is that it will also respond to calls to reform and address deeply rooted problems and issues confronting public service. Aksama na dyan yung pag-address ng graft and corruption, yung bureaucratic red tape, violations of the rights of employees, violations on merit, the merit and fitness principle, yung partisan political activities, inadequate benefits and privileges, organization effectiveness, unnecessary delays in frontline service delivery. Number two, yung bill granting civil service eligibility under certain conditions to government employees appointed under temporary status. Um, yung previous version of the bill um, seeks uh, to grant uh, those who have rendered under temporary status a total of at least five years of satisfactory performance civil service eligibility. Uh, pero meron po kaming counter-proposal po ng civil service commission dyan sa panukalang iyan. The third one is the Expanded Leave Benefits Act. It seeks to focus on the expansion of leave laws uh, in order to extend to government officials and employees greater protection against health complications and complications by affording them more time to rest and recuperate and limiting the incurrence of leave of absence without pay. The fourth one is amendments to the government reorganization law. Uh, it seeks to amend uh, RA number 6656, particularly section 4, uh, for agencies to exhaust all possible means to place in the approved reorganized structure the existing personnel in accordance with the order of preference. Uh, next is the amendments to the publication law or RA 7041. Para maharmonize po natin yung existing legal basis and policies in the posting and publication of vacant positions in government para magkaroon ng consistency and uniformity in human resource action, particularly yung pag-process namin ng appointments in government. And the last one is the anti-nepotism law. Uh, it's actually a law that aims, uh, or a bill that aims to put into a singular but comprehensive um, law yung uh, different laws prohibiting nepotism in government and introduce a new definition of nepotism. Um, may clean na lamang, uh, Mr. Chair. Next slide. Uh, on the statistics no, of government employees, uh, we, as you all know, the CSE conducts a yearly inventory of government personnel. And this is reflected in our Inventory of Government Human Resources or IGHR. The size, the distribution, and general profile of government are given in statistical data. And the inventory is actually based on actual occupancy of positions at the end of each year. But based on the report, as of June 30, 2022, ito po yung nakikita nating statistics. Total number of government employees is more than 1.8 million. Uh, most of them are in the career service, that's more than 1.6 million, at ang non-career service naman is 165,882. Mada-download po ito for easy reference sa aming CSC website, itong whole report ng IGHR. Uh, um, yun lamang po, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I remain most grateful to the Honorable Body for giving me this opportunity to be here together with my uh, commissioners ng CSC and uh, the officials of the Civil Service Commission and introduce CSC's priority legislative uh, measures and we hope to maintain this harmonious relationship with the Honorable Committee as we continue to pursue our partnership in upholding the welfare of all civil servants. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Chairperson Ogralas. Um Mamaya po sa lain natin isa-isa yun. No? Uh, may we now call on PRC OIC uh, Jose Cueto to give us a briefing on the commission. Uh, Dr. Cueto, you, you are now recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me just share my PowerPoint presentation. So, Mr. Chairman, this is the organizational meeting with briefing for the Senate Committee on Civil Service, Government Reorganization, and Professional Regulation. So, greetings to the Senate Committee on Civil Service, Government Reorganization, and Professional Regulation. 
led by the chairperson, Senator Ramon Bong Revilla Jr., the vice chairperson, Senator P. Ais Cayetano, members, Senator Win Gatchalian, Senator Cynthia Villar, Senator Rafi T. Tulfo, Senator Jingo Ejercito Estrada, Senator Joseph Victor Ejercito, Senator Mark Villar, and Senator Risa Hontiveros, and the ex-officio members, Senator Lauren Legarda, Senator Joel Villanueva, and Senator Aquilino Pimentel III. There will just be two uh, parts of my presentation, the overview on the PRC and the urgent concerns and legislative agenda. So let me start with the milestones. Uh, the PRC started as uh, the Office of the Boards of Examiners under the Civil Service Commission when RA 546 amended Section 10 of Act Number 4007. But it was in 1973 when PRC was created through the Presidential Decree Number 223. By 1974, from 16 professions, it progressed to 33 professions attached to the Office of the President. On year 2000, the RA 8981 or the PRC Modernization Act was uh, issued by President Estrada. And in 2005, the boards or the personal regulatory boards uh, attended regional agreements meetings in different Asian countries. By 2006, the PRC was uh, transferred to DOLE through EO number 565. That's A, issued by former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. In 2012, the EO number 83 or the PQF institutionalization was issued by former President Aquino. And among the boards, we crafted various competitiveness roadmaps. In 2016 and 2018, there were two laws which were issued, the CPD and the PQF laws. And Last year, we started with our computer-based licensure examination. There are three functions of the commission, executive, quasi-judicial, and quasi-legislative. And these are the mandates of the PRC, the regulation of the practice of professions, the administration of licensure exams, and registration of successful examinees, and the administrative supervision and control over 46 regulatory boards. At present, the commission proper is composed of uh, myself as the acting chairman, chairperson, and uh, recently appointed is Commissioner Erwin M. Enad. Our former chairman, Attorney Chofilo Pilando Jr., ended his term last August 26, 2022. There are 46 professions divided into four clusters, the technology, health and allied, business, education, and economic professions, and the engineering professions. Those in red are supposed to be present here, Mr. Chairman. And this is our vision for the PRC to be an instrument of the Filipino people in securing for the nation a reliable, trustworthy, and progressive system of determining the competence of professionals by credible and valid licensure examinations and standards of professional practice that are globally recognized. And this is our mission, to deliberately, scientifically, and consistently determine the competence of professionals through the provision of professional standards and judicious issuance of professional license. So these are the main programs and services of the PRC, the administration of license or examinations and registration of successful examinees, the conduct of administrative investigations, the implementation of the continuing professional development program, the conduct of inspection and monitoring of establishments and clinics, and participation in regional agreements, mainly the Asian Mutual Regional Arrangements. At the level of the Commission, uh, there will be separate presentation on the CPD law implementation and substitute bill. And at the level of the professional regulatory boards, let me start with the following. So these are the status report on the CPD, nursing, medicine and microbiology bills. These bills were approved in third reading at the level of the House of Representatives during the 18th Congress. However, at the level of the Senate, various agencies and institutions raised their concerns, reservations, as well as objections. Regarding the CPD bill, the PRC submitted its draft substitute bill to address issues and relevance 
affordability, accessibility, and availability of CPD programs. CPD as mandatory requirement for the updating and upgrading of knowledge, skills, values, and qualification standards for the practice of profession, and we now included CPD exemptions. In addition, there's now a provision of free or affordable cost-effective CPD programs by accredited providers, both government agencies, SUCs, DOCCs, APOS, and AIPOs. Then expansion of the sources of CPD credit units and the implementation of an electronic system for a more facilitated CPD application processing, among others. For the nursing bill, there were some objections raised by the DOAs as far as, as the chief nursing officer position is concerned and the salary standardization for nurses across sectors. The DBM was uh, for certain honoraria allowances and SG15 concerns, the PAGCOR and PCSO and the appropriations needed to support the implementation of the law. For the medicine bill, the Professional Regulatory Board of Medicine the Philippine Medical Association, among others, requested clarification on some provisions of the bill, like the creation of the Postgraduate Medical Education Council. For the microbiology bill, there were issues and overlaps in the scope of practice, like in medicine, veterinary medicine, medical technology, agriculture, pharmacy, and food technology. Another factor to be considered was thus was that these bills were transmitted to the Senate in the latter phase of the 18th Congress. Now, as far as issues raised by professionals during the pandemic were concerned, we identified mainly issues on the conduct of license or examinations because uh, we did not have any choice. We had lots of postponements and rescheduling. The limitation in the number of examinees based on uh, COVID guidelines issued by the IATF and the DOAs, and requirements like the RT-PCR quarantine for 14 days prior to taking the license or examinations. But we got the approval of the IATF prior to the conduct of license or examinations, especially during the height of the COVID-19 during the year 2020. For the professional regulation program, Issues on CPD, like difficulty in compliance with required CPD credit units and, of course, the cost, and the renewal of professional identification card, the appointment date, requirement and submission of CPD credit units, and, of course, they need to appear personally in PRC offices. Some deal with authentication and verification and issuance of certificate of good standing. I would like to inform the committee, uh, Mr. Chairman, that. Uh, the CSC uh, Contact Center ng Bayan and the Civil Service Commission among the government agencies with more than 50 referrals in 2020 and 2021. The PRC landed in the top 10 twice, uh, ninth in 2020 and uh, number eight in 2021. As far as uh, posting the highest resolution rate and as far as complaints referred by the Contact Center ng Bayan. So we have submitted uh, legislative measures, Mr. Chair, continuing professional development, the professional regulatory laws, and other professionalization laws under review. And there are new professions built. So the PRC would like to thank the chairman and members of the Senate Committee on Civil Service, Government Reorganization, and Professional Regulation for their critical role in the crafting of professional regulatory laws. This is the end of our report, Mr. Chairman. So thank you very much. Okay, um, again, uh, thank you for gracing today's organizational meeting and briefing. Now, uh, please allow us to ask questions to clarify certain uh, matters on the topic uh, topics raised. Uh, Ma'am Risa, baka ano, pwede kang mauna. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Siguro, uh, para sa akin po at this time, isang tanong lang muna okay. kay, uh, kay uh, PRC uh, Chair Cueto. Uh, sir, maganda umaga po sa inyo. Um, nabigyan po ako ng education roadmap briefing uh, unang linggo po nitong buwan ng Setyembre. 
And uh, one of the interesting things I learned, well, alam ko po na yung PRC ay may uh, jurisdiction din dun sa mga nagpa-practice ng profession ng education. Meron po silang napaka-interesanting um, uh, insight or uh, paglalarawan ng sitwasyon natin sa edukasyon sa ngayon. Sabi nila, yung curriculum ng CHED, yung Commission on Higher Education, hindi daw yon ang tinetest ng PRC at hindi rin daw yon ang hina-hire ng DepEd ng Department of Education. So, interesante yung yung paglalarawan nila ng uh, education system with uh, uh, related agencies tulad nga po ng PRC na parang sa halip na uh, integrated, mayroong parang disaggregation. I wonder sir kung nakarating na po ito sa atensyon ng PRC at least from that one of the many professions na may oversight kayo, yung profession ng edukasyon. And if ever, kung meron na pong nasimulang proseso ng pag-uusap ng PRC with CHED and possibly with DepEd para, well, you know, sa gitna nitong sinasabing education crisis, nakasama po doon yung sinasabing learning poverty, kung may nagsisimula na rin po ang pag-iisip ng PRC, how uh, your commission could help Uh, the primary education departments and agencies to address this crisis and to uh, to fill up this this learning poverty. So, yun lang po siguro uh, ngayon, <coughs> Chair Cueto uh, at, at Mr. Chair, if the good Chair Cueto would like to address this issue. Your yes, recognize, uh, Mr. Cueto. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Madam Senator. As far as the PRC table specifications Uh, which uh, guides the formulation of questions is concerned, Madam Senator. Uh, the table of specifications of the PRC, Professional Regulatory Board of Professional Teachers, uh, emanate from the Policy Standards and Guidelines, or the CHED, Memorandum Order, which CHED issued among the subjects. So we follow the subjects. It's according to the curriculum. And the latest is, I think, the outcome-based uh, curriculum or PSG issued uh, way back 2017. We have the chair of the PRB of uh, professional teachers, I think, with us, Honorable Rosita Navarro. And she would be in a better position to explain what the examinations in the PRC uh, have been uh, founded on. Uh, Honorable Rosita Nabarro, Mr. Chair, may I call on the chair of the PRB of Professional Teachers? Go ahead, go ahead. She's recognized. Hello. Can I be heard? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. You may proceed. Magandang umaga po. It's good to meet you, Senator Antiveros. Thank you. Uh, actually, the achievement, the, uh, uh, the, Licensure examination for teachers is not an achievement test. It is a, shall we say, qualification or the, uh, shall we say, the gateway before a person, before a, pro, before a graduate of a baccalaureate degree in education should be admitted to the teaching profession. So that is the main uh, nature of the licensure examination for teachers. Now, uh, the licensure examination started in 1994, and there had been uh, many developments from then on. And the most interesting uh, development is in 2012, when uh, Commission on Higher Education uh, enjoined us to implement what we call outcomes-based education. And that is, not memorization, the test of memorization, remembering facts, but the ability to, to analyze, to evaluate, and later to decide on the correct action to take. So those are the, that is why since uh, 2012, the examinations have been situational in nature in order to find out if the examinees are able to analyze based on the situation given to them in the 
in their questions. Now, but the definite, uh, Madam Senator, the definite measure that the board has taken is the collaborative exploratory research between CHED, DepEd, and PRC. And this was undertaken very recently uh, when what, what, what were the collaborative uh, roles of these three agencies? Uh, the, the study was on the variables that may relate with let performances because that is all that we have. What they, the, the ratings of the examinees in the licensure examination, but what will the ratings tell us? So the ratings must be uh, studied in relation to certain variables. And that is what this uh, exploratory research did because uh, PRC provided the licensure examination results in the years 2017, 2018, and 2019. So that was the role of PRC. How about the role of DepEd? DepEd provided the performance ratings of beginning teachers in the years 2018, 2019, and 2020 assuming or presuming that these were the, grad, the uh, examinees that successfully passed the licensure examination. And you know, these, the findings in this uh, initiative, this exploratory research are quite interesting. And uh, perhaps this can be the pattern for future researches for the improvement of uh, the present situation. Number one, number one finding. The research uh, found out that the comparability of performances on the three year period, 2017, 18, and 19, demonstrates alignment of the standards of teacher education between the CHED PSG, as mentioned by Chairman Cueto, and the PRC LEP. So that was the finding that there is. Alignment. Number two finding. Excuse me, Madam, uh, Ma'am Rosita. Yes, Ma'am. Yes, if I may, Ma'am. Dahil um, mga detalye na po ito, bagamat napakahalaga, mm -hmm. eh, Mr. Chair, gusto kong i-appreciate si Ma'am Rosita at si Chair Cueto for um, uh, beginning to share these important um points uh, with our committee. Kaya lang po, I'm aware, Mr. Chair at Ma'am Rosita, na mayroong pong mga particular uh, bills na agenda ng mm, aming hindi. So, pwede ko pong hilingin, Ma'am Rosita, Mr. Chair, na ma-furnish po ng PRC mm -hmm. sa ating komite sa pamamagitan ng chair ito pong collaborative exploratory research kung <coughs> excuse me kung voluminous po siya kahit po yung synopsis nito at lalong lalo na po yung important findings at saka uh, na sinimulan niyo lang i I enumerate ma'am Rosita at yung important recommendations din uh, mm -hmm. para magamit din po namin bilang basehan ng aming legislative work dito po sa committee ito at the same time sa mga Committee on Education namin sa Senate. I note po na given the, the years uh, highlighted by Ma'am Rosita, Mr. Chair, na 2012, tapos yung 2017 hanggang 2019, at saka yung 2018 hanggang 2020, syempre yung importanteng intervening uh, developments ay yung pagsabatas natin ng K-12 at syempre yung pandemic rin. So, pero maraming salamat po Ma'am Rosita at uh, Chair Cueto, uh, Mr. Chair, for uh, beginning to share with this committee yung mga importanteng uh, efforts, uh, findings, and <clears throat> I'm sure no, moving forward recommendations ng uh, PRC kaugnay po ng ating uh, education crisis. So salamat po Ma'am Rosita at uh, salamat Chair Cueto, salamat Mr. Chair. And looking forward po na matanggap ng ating komite Mr. Chair ito pong collaborative exploratory research uh, ng PRC kaugnay po ng uh, maraming issue ng edukasyon. Salamat po Mr. Chair. I will take note of that uh, Madam Senator. Uh, Pomsek, pakibigyan natin at parnish natin sila no? ng mga documents that uh, she needed. Yes. Okay, uh, 
we agree with the uh, with the points uh, raised that there should be harmony between the learning scattered in their courses and the uh, proficiency skills evaluated in licensure exams and ultimately the hiring uh, requirements for employment kailangan talagang tugma ang inaaral sa kanilang sa kailangan nilang uh, trabaho no so now uh, let's now move to uh, to other questions no dahil syempre na una si uh, si chairman nograles we we welcome the civil service commission's push for uh, flexible working arrangements to ensure uh, safe working spaces for the government employees during this pandemic uh, chair nograles may may we have an answer on the on the following number one may we request updates uh, for the commission from the commission on the various adjustments uh, forwarded by the agencies working uh, uh, in the new normal thank you mr chair um nag issue po yung civil service commission ng um ng uh, uh, ng issuance niya regarding flexible work arrangements po so this was uh called from yung experience uh natin during the pandemic uh and for future crises or, or emergencies or calamities so in a nutshell mr chair um under the issuance or resolution ng csc um each and every agency has the several options depending po kung ano yung nababagay at naaayon sa kanila without sacrificing yung mandato nila at without sacrificing of course yung public service uh, to the people so there are several iterations or several options available sa bawat ahensya or opisina ng gobyerno uh, the one who will determine kung ano yung pinakaangkop sa kanila would be the head of agency pero syempre uh, dun sa issuance or resolution ng CSC uh, nakalagay po yung mga options like they can have um, four day work week kung pwede naman uh, they can have a flexi uh, they can have uh, work from home arrangements uh, they can have um, different combinations of that uh, merong flexi time din po na available din po sa kanila so it really depends on the head of agency but um, as far as yung clients are concerned or yung taong bayan na may mga pangangailangan sa opisina niyan dapat hindi niya maramdaman na um, yung kakulangan ng serbisyo I ibig sabihin yung front facing po sa mga clients dapat nakikita ng clientele or ng mga Pilipino na sa core working hours ng opisina na yan meron talagang haharap sa kanila uh, at uh, kasama na dyan yung no noon time lunch break policy po natin uh, on the back end depende na yun sa head of agency kung ano yung uh, flexible work arrangements na i-approve ng head of agency um, and then isasubmit lang po nila yan sa amin, sa civil service, for our notation. Um, and uh, perhaps even uh, a review, um, especially kung may magreklamo naman. Kasi kami rin sa CSC, ang contact center ng bayan, kami rin tumatanggap ng reklamo at nagre-refer ng mga complaints. So may posibilidad din po na kung nag-adapt ng flexible working arrangement yung isang ahensya o opisina ng gobyerno pero nag-suffer naman yung public service nila sa taong bayan ay maaring magreklamo yung kanilang clientele sa amin at i-call namin ang attention po nila. Okay, may mga kaakibat ba itong uh, digitalization ng uh, mga proseso o serbisyo, Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Actually, yun ang sinusulong uh, ng ating current administration at ng ating uh, Pangulo. In fact, uh, even sa civil service, meron din po kami mga digitization at digitalization efforts. Siguro naging experience po nating lahat uh, during the pandemic na kumbaga na-accelerate, Mr. Chair, yung paggamit natin ng digital technology. 
nakita naman po natin na kahit na nagkaroon ng mga quarantines, uh, posible naman na may pagpatuloy natin ang ating public service through digital technology and digital means. No? Um, but right now, since karamihan ng ating mga uh, regions and uh, localities ay nasa alert level 1 naman po, ay ganun din. Um, parang kumbaga ine-encourage natin na bumalik physically. Pwede na po physically bumalik sa opisina. Uh, but then again, itong flexible work arrangements din po, um, magandang timing nito kasi number one, it not only addresses yung current situation natin. No, ng itong, kasi meron pa naman yung COVID at may monkeypox pa at hindi natin alam ano yung, what the future will bring. But number two, it also gives us options para sa mga immunocompromised, uh, para sa mga buntis na mga nanay na workers in government. Um, it also gives um, para dun sa mga options para sa mga persons with disabilities, halimbawa. Um, so, naayon at naangkop at uh, timing lang din na meron tayong ganitong um, issuance. And then, of course, leveraging on digital technology. So, kanya-kanyang opisina, may kanya-kanyang um, may kanya-kanyang push towards digital um, use of digital technology and digitalization. Kami rin po sa CSC. Ay, yun din po yung sinusulong namin, yung paggamit ng digital technologies para ma-pabilis, ma-improve, maging mas ma-enhance natin ang public service delivery, Mr. Chair. Sa ano lang, papakita na lang. Okay, Ma'am Rosita, paki-off po ang inyong video. I mean, yung paki-mute po, naririnig po namin kayo. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Nagrales. Taking off on the digitalization process, For PRC naman po, no? uh, on full uh, digitalization, online licensure examination, we can't deny the, the big role played by the, uh, by the pandemic in catalyzing the digitalization efforts of the government service delivery. Hindi natin may tatanggi ang uh, naging malaking papel ng pandemia sa ongoing digital sa pagbibigay serbisyo. Naniniwala tayo na mas ligtas ang online hindi po ba? Kaya unang-una ang uh, pagsalubong ng mga online professional examinations. No? Maalala nat natin uh, may dagdag na pondong inilaan para sa technology-based licensure examinations noong 2021 at 2022 sa GAA. No? PRC uh, Commissioner Cueto, can we have an answer on this? Uh, would you like to request an update? Uh, we would like to request... Uh, an update on the schedule of uh, licensure examinations. What were the timelines set? PRC Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as far as uh, examinations in 2020 were concerned, we were only able to conduct uh, 11 because of the uh, restrictions, lockdowns, because of mobility restrictions. For 2021, we were able to uh, conduct about uh, 61. And for this year, 51 already as of August, we have remaining 44 examinations uh, until December. And uh, for the computer-based licensure examination, we have conducted it in three uh, licensure examinations for small-scale licensure examinations, meaning less than 1,000. And we were able to do it only in PRC premises because uh, we make, made use of uh, cabling. So we did it in Moraita and the, the PICC. Our long-term plan is to expand it to the uh, medium-scale licensure examinations, meaning between 1,000 to 5,000, and eventually, to the large-scale examinations, those reaching above 5,000. Uh, for the information of the committee, Mr. Chairman, uh, the biggest number has always been with the professional teachers, reaching uh, more than 200,000. And uh, we have not yet developed our capability to use uh, internet because of the reliability problem of uh, 
internet availability in so many areas of the Philippines because we conduct our examinations in the different regions. So we're still in the early stage of uh, computerizing our licensure examinations, Mr. Chairman. As far as our systems, uh, can I proceed, Mr. Chairman? As, as far as our systems and uh, procedures uh, are concerned, we already have online application and payment, but uh, we are looking at uh, providing electronic copies of our certificate of registration. We don't know if we will be able to develop electronic uh, professional identification cards and electronic uh, certificate of good standing. So that will allow applicants to apply online, pay online, and maybe receive their certificates also, also online. Because that will, that will really ensure uh, full digitalization, uh, digitization of the processes and systems that are most frequently availed of by, by our professionals, Mr. Chairman. So those are what we are doing right now. Bukod sa pag-shift to online licensure examination, nais ko mabigyan ng uh, appraisal ng committee ng mga nakalipas na delays sa schedule ng licensure examinations. Noong mga nakaraang taon nga base sa pagkakala ko, no? uh, nagkaroon ng panawagan na agahan ang mga exams para sa nurses at doctors no? uh, sa gitna ng uh, na, nagtataas ang COVID cases noon. No? Kaya nakahabol po ba tayo dito? Uh, ilang, uh, ilang lisensyadong health professionals ba ang pumasa sa panahon ng pandemya? Ano yung mga percentage nito kumpara sa regular na passing rate natin? Go ahead, uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, from 2020, 2021, and 2022, we have the number of uh, examinees ranging from uh, 14,000 only in 2020, 143,000 in 2021 and 218,000 as of July of this year. But we still have 44 examinations to be conducted until the 31 of December. Compared to the pre-pandemic statistics, in 2017, we had 569,000. In 2018, we have 593,000. In 2019, we have 655,000. So as of uh, July 2008 to 2020, we have 218,000. But the oncoming or forthcoming licensure examination for professional teachers, because they constitute a very big percentage of the number of examinees, we have about uh, 200 plus thousand examinees, and we are preparing this for October 2. So we were forced to divide the 170,000 for 2021 as far as professional teachers are concerned into four. So the board had to give uh, four examinations instead of just uh, one or two. Uh, we limited the number of examinees because of, again, the pandemic uh, precautions. The maximum was 45,000, although that was already also a big uh, number. But this year, we will be able to cater to about 200,000 plus examinees, and we are preparing for that, uh, Mr. Chairman. So we are catching up with the figures uh, prior to the pandemic, and we hope to return to the usual figures uh, when the pandemic ends, but uh, I don't know when, when that will be. But we are in level one, and we have 100% uh, capacity utilization, and the DOH has already allowed us to reduce the physical distancing because uh, previously we utilized two to three meter distancing. From 32 examinees, we limited the number of examinees to only eight. So we have two to three meters distancing. But uh, last uh, month, we had a communication already with the DOH that we will be allowed we are already allowed to reduce the physical distancing to one meter and that will allow a bigger number of examinees per testing room 
So we're catching up with uh, pre-pandemic uh, figures, Mr. Chairman. Ang magandang balita na kahit pa paano ay nakakahabol na tayo bilang sa, sa bilang ano dahil uh, kailangan talaga natin ng mga healthcare workers na patunayan natin na sila ang ating mga sundalo sa panahon ng pandemya at sana magtuloy-tuloy po yan doktor no uh, since we are talking about examinations balik naman po tayo sa CSC on the civil service examinations Mahalaga ang papel ng civil service examination sa uh, pagsisiguro ng fitness to to work for the government. Yeah, Chairman Nagrales, please. Uh, one has been any uh, one uh, uh, has there been any uh, postponements that can be uh, attributed to the pandemic? Um, yes, Mr. Chair. Actually, in 2021, talagang nahirapan kami magkaroon ng um, exams no as you know ang limitation ng ating civil service exams it's uh, physical uh, pen and paper uh, or pencil and paper yung exams po natin so there were attempts to have uh, to conduct uh, exams nung 2021 no um but dahil nito nung July dapat ng 2021 um na conduct lang natin in three regional testing centers and NCR no August of uh, 2021 um na reschedule po uh nung September of 2021 limited din po conducted in regions 6, 7, 9 and CAR na defer yung sa ibang regions ano uh, October of 2021 deferred na naman po December of 2021 um Ito nagawa natin but very few no 3381 only because uh, nagmamakaawa na yung mga agencies so nagkaroon ng agency request uh, na examinations to be conducted para makapag uh, hire na po sila at nakonduct ito nakonduct ito sa NCR lamang and then uh, sa regional offices nung December 12 naman po selected regional offices nakapagbigay lang tayo ng uh, pencil and paper exam for 4,312. The following year, this year, ay ito po, uh, humabol na po tayo. So we conducted the uh, civil service exam, uh, pencil and paper, in March 13. Nagkaroon po tayo ng 70833, 70,833 examinees itong, nitong March 13. Uh, then we conducted our fire officer exam, penology officer exam, basic competency on uh, treasury, local treasury exam, at ang uh, foreign service exam noong April of 2022. Um, then nagkaroon po tayo muli ng civil service exam, pe pencil and paper, June 19, 2022. Total of 129,000 naman po, 117. Then another one on August 7, uh, pen and paper or pencil and paper uh, civil service exam, 138,671. Uh, plus uh, yung intermediate uh, competency license uh, local treasury exam, 382. So uh, dito itong 2022, Mr. Chair, ito mahabol na po tayo dahil nung 2021 talagang nahirapan po ang Civil Service Commission. Ang ang aming gustong mangyari din po, um, Mr. Chair, is i-expand natin yung computerized exams ng Civil Service and hopefully, hopefully, take it online as well. So yun po yung direction ngayon ng Civil Service um, exams uh, to conduct more computerized exams para mas maka-accommodate din po tayo ng mas maraming examinees over and above yung pencil and paper po natin. At habang pinag-aaralan natin na in the near future din po ay maaring mag-pilot test din po tayo ng online exams ng civil service. Uh, maraming lumalapit sa ating tanggapan na uh, dinudulog ang uh, kakulangan daw ng examination slots na nagiging dahilan ng pagkapurnada ng kanilang promotion o, o di nila pagta, pagkatanggap sa trabaho. Ilang slot ba, slot 
ang uh, nakalaan kada cycle. Sa tingin niyo po ba, eh, sapat na ang dami nito at uh, paano natin tinutugunan ang mga reklamo ukol sa kakulangan nito? Dati po kasi, Mr. Chair, 25 um, examinees per classroom ang nagagawa natin pre-pandemic. Noong nagkaroon po ng pandemia, yung 25 uh, slots per classroom ay naging 15 or 10, no? depending on alert levels din po uh, ng, ng locality. So kung alert level 2, kasi right now alert level 1 or alert level 2 naman po, pag alert level 2, syempre mahahati yan. Pag alert level 1, kung kakayanin naman yung 25 per classroom, ay yun naman po yung ginagawa natin. Um, so yun yung naging limitation sa slots. At um, gaya ng tama po kayo, Mr. Chair, dahil nga sa nag-suffer tayo sa 2021 na halos hindi po tayo nagkaroon ng um, examinations ng civil service, eto na nga po sa 2022, mahabol po tayo. And uh, I, I believe uh, meron kaming um, commission meeting um, mamaya po uh, end next week para pag-usapan po namin ano yung aming targets for 2023. Mindful na eto na nga po under, na timing lang din po Mr. Chair na bagong administration uh, marami pong mga unfilled vacancies na gustong ma-fill up maraming plantilla positions ang pwedeng ma-fill up, marami ang pwedeng ma-appoint pero wala pong uh, hindi pa po nakapasa ng civil service exam. So, that's the reason why, Mr. Chair, nabanggit ko po na tinitingnan po namin yung expansion ng aming computerized exams kasi meron po kaming tinatawag na COMEX. Kanya lamang ang limitasyon is again the space and the number of computers. So, we're looking for other means, perhaps uh, even tying up with state universities para magkaroon tayo ng mas maraming uh, uh, computerized exams na dagdag din po doon sa uh, pencil and paper exams natin. That way, hopefully, ipaplanong namin, ipap, ilalatag namin, namin for 2023 how we can combine pen and paper, pencil and paper, and computerized exams para dumami po yung slots for examinees in 2023. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Ano? Uh, with you around, nothing is impossible. Ikaw pa. Kaya uh, nasa mabuting kamay ang CSC. Uh, alam kong kaya mong habulin yung performance ng PRC na para matagdagan ng mga nasa servisyo publiko. Well, speaking of uh, public service, let's move on to uh, reporting on the quality of public service. In the age of social media, client satisfaction or feeling back should be instant. Sometimes we go viral for wrong reasons, no? Some get bashed. For example, mayroong empleyado na nakuhaan ng video na nag explain Nakala ng tao, masungit siya. Pero hindi naman pala. Now, how are we going to balance this scenario? Uh, has the CSC provided the framework of a citizen feedback? mechanism, whether it is good or bad service by our civil servants, lalong-lalo na para sa mga nasa frontline services natin. No? Minsan may mga servisyo na ginagampanan ng mga, ng mga mukhang masungit pero efficient naman. Paano po yan, uh, Commissioner? Yes, Mr. Chair. Actually, um, nabanggit ko nga po kanina, ang isa sa mga tungkulin ng civil service ay yung pagmaman ng ating uh, contact center ng bayan. Ito yung complaints referral system po natin. So, meron po tayong CCB, more than 10 years na po ang contact center ng bayan. Kaka, ano lang ng, kaka-celebrate lang po ng anniversary ng CCB. At ito na nga po, uh, dito po pwede magreklamo ang taong bayan. Um, meron pong text, meron tawag, meron din po sa Messenger at uh, Facebook. So we are also looking into um, adding another feature, yung chatbot po, uh, para mas mabilis yung pagtugon sa mga reklamo at pag-refer uh, na mga reklamo doon sa mga ahensya 
na concerned. Um, kung natatandaan nyo, Mr. Chair, uh, in one of the State of the Nation addresses ni Pangulong, then President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, nabanggit niya nga po yung, yung uh, uh, worst performing no, na agencies. Yung pinanggalingan ng data niya is from the contact center ng bayan. Yung contact center ng bayan, yun din po yung naging inspirasyon niya para ma-establish yung hotline 8888 niya po. Um, so that being said, we just like to emphasize na sa contact center ng bayan, 100% po yung aming complaints referral rate, 93% po yung resolution rate namin ng mga complaints and referred complaints. No? So efficient naman po ang contact center ng bayan. But uh, on the flip side naman po, yung sinasabi nyo nga, uh, Mr. Chair, na meron naman magagaling ng mga civil servants. And dito po papasok yung rewards and recognition. Tinitingnan ngayon ng civil service, what are the other rewards and recognitions that we can give to deserving civil servants? Kasi right now, what we have, Mr. Chair, is the Presidential Award. You know, ito yung Lingkod Bayan Award na ina-award for exemplary service ng ating mga civil servants. Doon po sa Malacanang, mismo si Pangulo ang nagbibigay niyaan. Uh, meron din po tayong Pag-asa Award. Uh, that's an award given by the Civil Service uh, Commission for exemplary service din po. Uh, meron din po yung uh, Lingkod Bayani kung saan ito yung mga killed in the line of duty. Nagbibigay din po ang civil service niyan. But uh, there are other things that we're also looking at in terms of providing more rewards and recognition. And we encourage also other agencies to have their own rewards and recognition system. Um, kasi kabilang po yan sa four pillars ng HR. Uh, the, the fourth pillar or one of the four pillars is rewards and recognition. So we in the civil service also try to guide agencies, lalo na mga HR offices nila, na magkaroon din po sila ng kanila mga rewards and recognition para sa civil servants na talaga naman magaling, matagal na rin po nagserbisyo sa taong bayan at uh, uh, very efficient and very excellent service din po, Mr. Chair. Well, thank you, uh, Chairman Agrales. Tama lang na siguraduhin ng uh, efficient ang government service and that we also recognize the people in service who are doing their jobs uh, and and doing it well. No? So now, uh, we go back to uh, no, PRC naman, no? on updating, uh, amending professional regulatory laws. Uh, ang tanong ko uh, para sa PRC, PRC uh, currently handles the, the regulation of the uh, 46 professions. Sa katunayan, yung iba nga uh, dito mas matanda pa sa, sa akin. Ano? Uh, are we under or over-regulating? Commissioner Cueto, what is your take on this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, that's a very good question for us to assess. Uh, the balance between uh, the developmental role of the PRC versus the regulatory role. Because uh, we have activities and initiatives that aim to develop the professions, like the implementation of the Philippine Qualifications uh, Framework. The CPD is supposed to develop the competencies, the skills of professionals but it has a regulatory impact because uh, the CPD credit units was linked to the renewal of the PRC ID, the identification card. And that's where we got uh, a number of complaints because many professionals, uh, and I think you heard the feedback from different professional groups, Mr. Chairman, regarding uh, the cost or the and availability of uh, CPD programs in their places. And uh, we also uh, try to develop the competencies or competitiveness of our professionals. As I said, uh, starting 2012, we have crafted competitiveness roadmaps for all the professional groups. And we are trying to revise and uh, enhance the competitiveness roadmaps that we crafted way back 2012. 
as far as regulation is concerned, the, the balance between developmental and regulatory, uh, what is being highlighted uh, many times is uh, the administrative investigations, uh, especially a question for professional teachers uh, with loans. Uh, I don't know if uh, that has reached the office of the chairman. A question on can they still renew their professional identification cards if they have administrative cases? And we have answered yes. They are not barred from renewing their professional identification cards, even if they have cases, because the cases may still be ongoing. No decisions have been made. No final decision has been arrived at. So they continue to be able to renew their professional identification cards. So uh, assessing whether it's more of a regulatory, meaning what we have been doing, I think uh, both developmental and regulatory roles of the PRC have been developed. And uh, we will try to emphasize more on the developmental because in the law and the continuing professional development, there's also a provision on career progression and specialization program. And uh, different boards and the different professions are now developing their specializations. Because among the 46 professions, uh, Mr. Chairman, the most developed is the profession of medicine, where there are 70 to 80 specializations and subspecializations. The uh, profession of dentistry, where there are about nine specializations. Whereas in the rest, uh, there are different stages of developing their specializations. So that's where I think the focus on the developmental role of the PRC will be really demonstrated. And we will. Uh, we also have our outstanding professional, as uh, mentioned, as far as rewards and incentives are concerned. But these are uh, the outstanding professionals in the different pro professions that we are dealing with. We have been uh, doing that for a number of years already. That's something positive because we are able to highlight the excellence of our professionals. And of course, in the uh, Asian Mutual Recognition Arrangements, where there's qualification recognition, mutual recognition, then we pay attention to the uh, advancement of the qualifications of our own professionals so that they will be able to compete with their counterpart professionals in the other Asian countries or Asian countries. And uh, I hope, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we will be able to build more on the developmental role uh, rather than the regulatory aspect. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, what are we uh, to lose if we can't uh, push for the amendment and uh, updating of the professional regulatory laws? Uh, how how many are we expected to be affected? Uh, there's a total of 4.8 million registered professionals, uh, but uh, we have a, an operational definition of uh, the number of professionals who have been renewing their professional IDs for the last three years, and those are the active professionals, which may only, uh, it's down... From the 4.8, it's down to about 3 million. So we're dealing with about 3 million. But even those who are renewing may not be in the actual practice of the profession because they may be in other uh, areas or other government agencies in administrative positions. And uh, we do not have an exact figure. But if we do not uh, come up with... Uh, the necessary amendments, for example, or enhancements of the regulatory laws, then we are not updating them according to the needs, uh, trends, and developments in the professions. That's the reason why we will be submitting a list of uh, the professional regulatory laws. Uh, one point in case is uh, the Medical Act of 1959. I belong to the medical profession, and it's one of the oldest. In fact, during one of my presentations in the ASEAN, and I had a slide on the professional regulatory laws, 
uh, they were telling me that, uh, oh, your regulatory law is even older than us. So it really needs to be amended uh, because there have been so many developments in the, not only in health, uh, in the health cluster, but uh, along the technology, engineering professions, even the business, education, social professions. We really need to uh, be abreast of the, the recent developments, the fourth industrial revolution especially. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Let us stress that uh, updating is really necessary so that their specific needs are met, especially with the, the with, with the recent developments. No, elantay sumabay sa makabagong panahon. And since the PQF was mentioned, we have uh, we have questions on on that, Commissioner, on the Philippine uh, Qualification Framework. Uh, Ito namang Philippine Qualifications uh, Framework under Republic Act Number 10968. Uh, inilarawan ang mga levels of educational qualifications at itinakda ang mga standards for qualification outcomes. Napakahalaga ng batas na ito upang uh, linangin ang uh, kakayahan at kaalaman ng ating mga professional. Uh, for our PRC commissioner, mas na, napadali, na, mas, mas napabali, napadali na ba ang uh, paghahanap ng trabaho at pag-aaral abroad ng ating mga Filipino professionals because of this law? O tulad ba ng dati na kailangan pa rin nilang kumuha ng uh, further studies or qualification exams? Commissioner? Mr. Chair, we have been using the PQF since 2012 when it was still an executive order number 83. So we continue to use it, especially when it was already legislated under the leadership of uh, Senator Joel Villanueva. And uh, we use that as a basis for classifying the qualifications uh, that are being uh, incorporated in the Philippine Qualifications Register. So now we have a Philippine Qualifications Register where you where professionals will see the qualifications that are being conferred. The problem may be in that uh, there are five agencies, mainly DepEd, CHED, TESDA, PRC, and DOLE. And uh, each of them have their own roles because we have uh, DepEd, CHED, TESDA, and PRC as qualifications agencies, meaning we confer qualifications. For PRC, we confer professional qualifications. Like for example, for the nursing graduates, they, they have their BSN, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, and that's the academic qualification conferred by the higher education institutions. Once they pass the nurse license or examination, they are conferred the quali professional qualification of a registered nurse. So if, if, graduates from the different regulated courses pass the license or examinations they are given the uh, qualifi uh, professional qualification registered and licensed professional plus a pqf level of uh, level six but in some professions under the prc a masteral uh, degree is required and for them under the pqf that will be under pqf level seven for medicine because they already have uh, the students uh, entering the College of Medicine already acquired a bachelor's degree as part of the requirement for entry into medical school. When, when they graduate from medicine, they are already given PQF level 7. And a number of the CHED CMOs and policies and standards or guidelines of CHED already include the PQF level, uh, Mr. Chairman. So uh, that could be included as far as the documentation for the qualifications of our professionals when they apply for employment uh, here domestically and even abroad. But of course, uh, the PQF may not be uh, known by foreign countries. So there is need to really disseminate this to our professionals so that they could be utilized. As far as employment application, uh, promotion is concerned because uh, 
if you are not con uh, conferred your level six, for example, how can you go up to level seven? Or if you are conferred level seven, how can you go up to level eight? So that's the role of the career progression and specialization program, the leveling. So we also use the Philippine Qualifications Framework levels as the baseline in the enhancement of the qualifications of our professionals. That's how we do it, uh, Mr. Chair. Salamat po, Commissioner. Talagang napakahalaga na patuloy tayong uh, nagpapatibay at nagpapalakas ng kakayahan at kaalaman ng ating mga professionals, lalo na rin in world, world stage. No? Up, to, up to par po, dapat tayo uh, sa ating uh, foreign uh, counterparts. Uh, it benefits both them and uh, people they serve and, and cater to. Now, let us move on the government counterpart on on it which uh, also ensures continuing qualification and fit, fitness of our uh, civil servants. Um, on continuing professional development, continuing professional development is a lifelong learning process which aims to enhance the professional's competence by uh, upgrading and updating knowledge and skills as brought about by modernization and advancements in their professions. What are, are the policy directions of the PRC on consolid consolidating and uh, addressing the issues and concerns of the CPD? Commissioner? Uh, we have with me, I have with me the uh, Program Committee Chair for Continuing Professional uh, Development, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, may I be allowed to call on uh, Honorable Attorney Ramil Gabau to present uh, the PRC initiatives and trust as far as CPD is concerned. With your permission, Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead. Uh... Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Marami salamat po. And good morning to all of us. May I be allowed to share my presentation, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, you may continue. Go ahead. Just make it short, huh? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. So here is the briefer on the, on the proposal of the PRC for the enhancement of the CPD Act of uh, 2016, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, most of the rationale for the proposal uh, for, our, for the enhancement of the CPD Act, uh, I mentioned na banggit na po lahat halos ni, uh, ni Acting Chair uh, Commissioner Cueto po na PRC. So... As a preliminary po, the PRC submitted already the proposed substitute bill to both houses of Congress during the 18th Congress, which uh, included proposed enhancements taken and harmonized from various bills filed during the 18th Congress. And uh, at the House of the Representatives, the proposed bill was approved on third reading as House Bill Number 9311 during the 18th Congress. So ito po yung mga essential enhancement na gusto namin i-propose na banggit na kanina and I appreciate really the question of the chair uh, whether or not uh, the PRC or CPD in particular is uh, developmental or regulatory no, or highly regulatory. And this is the main reason for the failure uh, or difficulty in the implementation of the CPD Act. No? We propose that the mandatory nature of CPD is not anymore a mandatory requirement for the renewal of the professional identification card. Ito po ang sentro ng controversy po sa implementation ng CPD Act of 2016. Kasi nga, pag walang full compliance ng CPD, walang PIC, so nagre-reklamo po ang ating mga professional. Uh, ang proposal po namin ay magkaroon ng separate na monitoring ng uh, CPD compliance uh, distinct and separate from the renewal of the PIC. Uh, another po na proposed essential enhancement namin ay yung CPD should be a component of the CPSP. Now, I am glad that uh, you continuously uh, propose a bill, uh, Mr. Chair, like uh, this year you have Senate Bill number 264. At ito uh, uh, naman po ay katulad ng 18th Congress ay isinama na namin dun sa proposed consolidated bill kasi very very uh, important po na ma-link natin ang CPD sa career progression at specialization programs at naipaliwanag naman na po ni Commissioner Cueto ang kahalagahan ng CPD 
no kailangan po ang direction ng CPD ay towards CPSP and of course in compliance with the Philippine Qualifications Framework Act Mr. Chair Another is uh, the CPD is pursuant to the requirement of the ASEAN integration no yung ASEAN mutual recognition arrangements yung mga may mga existing PRLs po na may mga CPD na po for a long time uh, especially those in the engineering and health clusters do no? and technology clusters Eh, pag na-refill po natin ang CPD, lahat po yun ay mababaliwala. So ang kailangan lang po namin ay uh, iporso natin ang CPD kasi nga ito rin po ay porso 1 to PQF. Which as we repeated dimension nga po, eh, kailangan ng mga professionals ang global competitiveness. Ang isa pa pong proposal namin for enhancement ay yung mga provisions and exemptions to OFWs, first renewals of new professionals and senior citizens. Uh, ito po ay hinango namin sa iba't ibang mga proposed bills sa Senate at sa House po no so we are entertaining all of these uh, of this uh, uh, proposal no for exemptions kasi sa CPD Act of 2016 ang katotohanan po ay hindi po kasi ito nagbibigay ng exemptions uh, ginawan lamang po ng paraan ng PRC na magkaroon ng exemptions no for example on provisions of uh, CPD during pandemic so nagpo-provide po kami ng exemptions para doon sa mga health workers by virtue of resolution number 1139 ng PRC those uh, in the front lines during the pandemic po uh, nagbigay po kami ng exemptions doon uh, but uh, the reality is that the CPD Act of 2016 does not provide any exemptions even us in the boards we are not exempt from CPD and uh, and uh, other proposed essential enhancements po Yung provisions that will address concerns on the affordability, accessibility, availability, and quality of CPD programs. Ito po lahat ng ito ay uh, meron po kaming proposal sa substitute bill na hopefully will address these concerns. No, Paulit-ulit po kasi itong inilalabas sa social media at nare-reklamo po sa mga kaukulan and I hope and I am I am sure nare-reklamo din po sa office ninyo Mr. Chair. Uh, meron po kaming proposal ng mga provisions na mag address po sa mga ganitong concerns po. And provisions on ways and means and other sources of CPD activities like yung mga lifelong learning, which is also a mandate of the PQF. No? Professional work experience, a mandate of PQF also. no uh, Self-directed learning, non-formal learning, or even formal learning. Ito po ay uh, gusto na namin isama doon sa enhancement. Para hindi lamang po yung PRC uh, on its own nagde-decide, no? But uh, we can, we can, we propose that this be included in the enhancement of CPD Act. Actually, meron na pong existing resolutions ang PRC nito, kaya nga lang po katulad ng resulta ng investigations ng Senate in 2019, lumalabas sa mga temporary resolutions na po yun, kasi nga po hindi matatagpuan sa batas. And uh, provisions requiring various government agencies and private establishments to make CPD integral in their personal plans and programs, provide funding and make CPD free to professionals engaged or employed by them. Kung government agencies po sana, dapat eh, isama nila sa programa nila itong CPD at kung maari po, ay mag-provide na rin ng necessary appropriations sa mga professionals na lingkod bayan natin. Nang hindi na sila gumastos pa, and uh, yung kanilang mga in-house training programs, seminars no ay maiisama na yun sa mga CPD programs na pwedeng ma-credit no and then of course uh, provisions for funding in the operation of the CPD and the CPSP like the computerization that uh, we have been discussing earlier and which was uh, elucidated no or naipaliwanag naman po ni Commissioner Queto so, Mr. Chair, yun lamang po ang aking uh, maiksing uh, uh, presentation as to the proposed essential enhancement of the CPD Act of 2016. The proposed bill po uh, ay naisabita po namin during 18th Congress and we are going to resubmit it if it will be required by the Chairman po. Good morning po. Thank you. Salamat, Ramil. No? Uh, while we ensure continuing professional development, we should also ensure that we do not make the, the, the processes unnecessarily burdensome for our professionals. Tulungan natin sila at huwag uh, parusan dahil tayo rin naman ang uh, makikinabang sa patuloy nilang pag, uh, paglinang sa kanilang mga talino, talento at kakayahan. No? Ngayon naman tuloy natin ang diskusyon sa mga uh, napagdaanan ng ating mga professional 
no nitong mga nakaraang taon issues uh, encountered by professionals during the pandemic uh, for the PRC mamaya uh, bibigyan ko ng pagkakataon makapagsalita si uh, uh, Commissioner Lizada pero mamaya po uh, ma'am dali lang ah uh, you discuss this issue raised by uh, uh, by professionals during the pandemic in in the conduct of board examinations, renewal of their licenses, retrieval of uh, certificates, and compliance with training units. Commissioner Queto, can, can we have an answer, uh, please? Kasi itong mga naging hadlang sa kanila, eh, no? paghanap ng trabaho sa ibang bansa, o uh, nakakatagal sa kanila upang i-renew ang kanilang mga lisensya, Ay, it, 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 it hampers their work. Okay, thank right. you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As far as the uh, professional identification card is concerned, we have already extended the validity. And uh, as far as CPD credit units are concerned, we also have uh, the undertaking where the uh, CPD credit units required have been really reduced to uh, minimum. And uh, for OFWs actually they are exempted, so they, they don't have to really uh, be concerned about the renewals of their PRC IDs. And uh, we conduct mobile services. Our regional offices conduct mobile services so that uh, they will, we will be bringing our services closer to the professionals. Uh, I myself have uh, led in the uh, mobile services for major hospitals uh, in the different regions. And uh, as far as the uh, renewal is concerned, I think we are addressing all the issues that are uh, related to the renewals. And as uh, Attorney Ramil Gabao has uh, mentioned, the key is uh, separating the uh, CPD program from the renewal of the professional identification card uh, uh, requirement. That will be a big uh, uh, reduction in the load or the concern of the professionals, the link. So we are addressing the concerns, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and uh, as far as many professions are concerned, it's true that uh, because of the changed landscape, there were adjustments in how they practice their professions because uh, especially in the health professions because co actual contact with patients were really avoided during the time in the among the health professions it was the profession of medicine where we suffered uh, the biggest number of uh, mortalities or deaths because of the covid-19 followed by the nursing professions because it's understandable because they are the ones closest to the patients. And uh, there was shift to uh, telemedicine or telehealth and even uh, pharmacy, they could order uh, or uh, consult uh, with pharmacists and physicians uh, through teleconferencing. So those were the, uh, but mostly limitations on uh, patient and uh, healthcare professional contact. So that's gradually uh, returning uh, to normal. Uh, the precautions on requiring RT-PCR before admission, before any kind of operation, I think that may still stay because uh, there are patients who are not symptomatic or not showing any symptoms, but they could be carrying the virus. So those have been the adjustments, uh, Mr. Chair, as far as the practice of professions are concerned. And uh, I think uh, those are also the adjustments as far as the education part is concerned, because we have not yet returned to really uh, pre-COVID uh, conditions as far as the education and practice is concerned. So we continue to monitor the conditions uh, prevailing in the different professions, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Cueto. Uh, tulungan natin sila at uh, wag natin pabayaan dahil malaki ang bag nila sa ating lipunan. 
at uh, marami ang kanilang uh, contribution sa mga industriya. Dapat uh, kakampi nila tayo at hindi dagdag pahirap. So now again, we acknowledge the presence of uh, Commissioner Eileen Lizada of the Civil Service Commission. Tamang tawa, tama ating question ni susunod. Uh, Commissioner Eileen, you are now recognized. Kanina ka pa nag-raise ng <laughs> Thank you, Madam. Um, good morning, po, Chair. Actually, um, okay na ho kami ni, ni Sir Carlo. This is in addition to the information lang po dun sa civil service exams. So, first time ho magkakaroon ng exam sa Kalayan Islands. Dapat ho ngayong year magkakaroon pero naabutan ho ng bagyo. So, it's going to be next year, Chair. And, uh, uh, yun lang ho, we just wanted to update you na kagaya ho ng Sulu, matagal lang ho din naka-exam, pero naka-exam rin ho lately doon sa Sulu. So just updates lang po, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, uh, tama po yan, Commissioner. Lapit natin sa taong bayan ng uh, examinations. Good job. Uh, on security of tenure, ayon sa ating saligang batas on the Civil Service Commission, Ang mga tinatanggap sa serbisyo publiko ay dapat according to merit and fitness. Matagal at mahaba na po ang debate nito. So, Chair Nagrales, what is your take on this? How do we ensure that only the best and most qualified get into the bureaucracy? And how do we balance this with excellent length of the service? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I know this is a recurring uh, question, no? At kanya nga po meron mga panukala, suggestions coming from Congress uh, na halimbawa, um, um, tingnan natin muli yung Rasul Law, no? I think the issue kasi po, Mr. Chair, is yung mga matagal ng naka nagtatrabaho in a temporary capacity pero hindi kahit ilang beses mag-take ng civil service exam ay sa kasamang palad ay hindi nakakapasa so there is uh, a suggestion na tulad ng Rasul Law ay for a limited period only ay yung mga how many years ng nakapagtrabaho on a temporary capacity uh, ay bibigyan po nung kumbaga uh, eligibility no? without passing the civil service exam. So kami sa CSC, uh, I'm joined by Com I and Com Ryan, pinag-uusapan namin yung counter-proposal naman po namin. And ang counter-proposal namin sa panukalang iyon ay magkaroon ng point system. So kumbaga, kailangan pa rin yung kumuha ng civil service exam, pero pag hindi naman maka, hindi naman uh, hindi naman umabot sa passing rate, uh, depende sa number of years in service in a temporary capacity, bibigyan ng additional points para yun po yung uh, kumbaga, way paraan na ma-reach niya yung passing level. Uh, it's a balance, it's a way, it's, it's our proposal to the Senate and to the House because I know there are already bills filed tulad ng mga last Congresses. Uh, I think it, has, it is a healthy balance na number one, kailangan niya pa rin kumuha ng civil service exam para hindi po masacrifice yung tinatawag nating merit and fitness. But number two, it also acknowledges yung expertise, yung experience na uh, meron po siya dahil sa number or many years of service na po niya. And I hope that uh, the Senate and the House of Representatives will, will agree to that proposal para ano naman po. Um, kumbaga, win-win po tayo dito. Yes, uh, tulungan po natin itong ating mga kawani. No? Uh, mahusay po sila magserbisyo, wala tayong may reklamo. No? So let us tilt the scales in their favor. Their efforts and the length of excellence uh, service they have given should be uh, recognized. So, naman po, isa namang uh, matagal nang uh, usapin ito. So, let's address this. Now, what is the Commission's policy on, on the regularization of casuals? 
So anong pwede natin gawin bukod sa pag-endo sa kanila? Mahalagang talakayin natin ito sapagkat uh, kapansin-pansin ang higit na uh, 600,000 na job orders, no, JOs. Ang uh, and, and contract uh, service, no, contract of service in COS ang tinatawag, no. Uh, kumpara sa halos na 200,000 unfilled plantilla positions. Isang un unfilled plantilla sa bawat tatlong kontraktual. Sa so, uh, Mr. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, na banggit ko na rin po ito doon sa ating confirmation hearing kahapon, no. Ang Civil Service Commission po as an institution ang aming uh, take po dito, ang aming position po ay of course, uh, we would want to see more Filipinos enter civil service. That being said, yung issue po ng JOs and COS, strictly speaking, technically speaking po, wala po sa jurisdiction namin. Dahil nga po, uh, this, is, this really belongs to the jurisdiction ng DBM at COA kasi meron po silang issuance tungkol sa JOs and COs. Uh, simply because yung pinanggagalingan po ng pondo para sa pagbayad ng JOs and COs ay hindi po sa PS. Mula po yan sa MOOE. So strictly speaking, hindi po kasama sa amin yan sa civil service. But that being said, um, kami as an institution, we want more of the JOs and COs to be entered into civil service. Ang limitations nga lang po is, number one, uh, merit and fitness nga po, kailangan po masa sila ng civil service exam. Kaya nga po, ang aming uh, gusto mangyari ay um, to find ways and means to allow them especially pag nakapag-servisyo naman sila uh, in a temporary capacity, mabigyan naman po ng additional points yun sila. Uh, para po mas marami sa kanila ang uh, babalik, uh, ma maipasok natin sa civil service. Um, number two, yung latest issuance po ng DBM at COA, ayaw ko sila pangunahan, um, hanggang December 31 na lang po uh, yung pagbibigay ng JOs and COs. No? Uh, because ang idea is that By December 31, 2022, eh, kailangan bubuksan na po yung mga plantilla items for JOs and COs to enter into the civil service or to, be, to enter into to, to the plantilla items. But again, uh, wala po sa jurisdiction namin yan, Mr. Chair, because that's something that kailangan pag na ng DBM and COA. Ang hopeful lang tayo is that nag-reach out naman po ang DBM at ang COA sa amin sa civil service to get our inputs as well. Um, dito sa issuance po nila and uh, we will be uh, we will be giving our inputs based dun sa aming position mas gusto namin mas maraming makapasok po sa civil service okay. uh -huh. magtulungan tayo yung paunawa din sa mga concerned agencies uh, lalo na sa darating na budget season no? buksan natin ang mga pinto ng uh, oportunidad lalo na sa kanilang mga kwalipikado naman, masisipag at uh, mauusay. So, yan. So, next naman, may mga offices ba na nag-reskilling uh, res or upskilling para maging regular ang mga casual at uh, contractual? Ilan na ang nakinabang po dito? Yes, Mr. Chair. Kami po sa Civil Service Commission, meron din po kaming learning and development uh, pillar kung saan po ay nag nagbibigay tayo ng reskilling and upskilling uh, training, learning and development opportunities para sa mga nasa loob ng uh, civil service at uh, kahit yung mga gustong pumasok sa civil service. Um, ang gusto po namin mangyari ay gawin na po nat nating high-tech ang pagbibigay ng learning and development uh, initiatives um, sa mga pangangailangan uh, ng ating mga civil servants, no? depending on the needs nila and competencies. So, nabagit ko rin po ito kahapon sa ating confirmation hearing, ang ambition po natin sa civil service ay magkaroon po ng masinsinan na pagpa-finalize natin ng mga Uh, competency assessments natin. So, kailangan po ma-identify natin yung core competencies, leadership competencies, functional and organizational competencies ng uh, 
uh, kinakailangan ng mga kawani ng gobyerno. Kailangan matest natin ang mga kawani ng gobyerno kung saan sila dito magkaroon po ng competency assessment. Itatay up po natin yung competency assessment sa learning needs din po nila para ma-achieve nila yung kanilang competencies. That way, mas maganda po yung makita ng civil servant na ito pala yung competencies na kailangan ko, ito yung learning needs na kailangan ko para maabot ko yung competencies na yan para ma-promote ako. At uh, ang, ang ambition din po namin, ang gusto namin mangyari, ay gawin din po yan uh, using digital technology, using online platforms. So, uh, ang in-envision natin, Mr. Chair, is online, any civil servant can test his competencies online. Makikita niya yung results ng kanyang competency gap at ang kanyang training gaps and ma-identify niya anong learning opportunities ang pwede, uh, pwede siya mag-enroll or pwede niyang kunin of learning institutes tulad ng DAP and other training um, Uh, centers po natin so that mas maliwanag para sa civil servant ang kanyang career path. Yun po yung gusto namin mangyari, Mr. Chair. Yeah, tuloy natin yung mga hakbang na yan uh, para mas palakasin pa ang ating mga civil servants. If we uh, nurture them, they will grow and uh, that will benefit the greater good. So thank you very much for full, uh, fruitful discussion. CSC and PRC it shed light into the many issues that our professionals and uh, civil servants face. No, uh, in closing, uh, I would like to thank my colleagues no, uh, or uh, si Senator Tiberos, no, yung iba hindi sumipot, <laughs> who took the time to attend this organizational meeting and briefing. And thank you, uh, CSC, PRC, for being with us today. Baka meron kayong gusto idagdag. Uh, uh, Chairman uh, Negrales, baka meron gusto yeah. idagdag. Yes, Mr. Chair. Once again, maraming salamat sa aking confirmation. Yes. And sana na po, um, yung panukalang batas nyo po na magkaroon ng HR offices uh, sa bawat LGUs ay sana this Congress may pasa natin. Ang good news po, uh, Mr. Chair, ay nakausap ko po si Speaker... Martin from Waldes. At sabi niya po, as far as the House of Representatives is concerned, as far as he is concerned as Speaker, ay uh, ipapasa niya po yan, gagawin niya pong priority yan sa House of Representatives. And in fact, ang isa sa mga pina-author niya po noon is no less than uh, Congressman Sandro Marcos at yung aking kapatid na nasa Kongreso, si Congresswoman uh, Migs Nograles. So, sa House of Representatives, ang promise po ni Speaker Martin ay papasa po mabilis. So, nasa inyong kamay po, <laughs> Mr. Chair. And I'm very happy that you're the Ayaw author. Pressure mo, ha? <laughs> but, okay. but you're the author, Gawin Mr. Chair. Natin yan, Don't worry. Uh, marami tayong uh, magtutulong-tulong para dyan. Thank okay, you. Okay, uh, PRC. Uh, kay uh, Commissioner Cueto, baka meron kayong uh, uh, mensahe pa. Okay na ba? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, let me thank the committee through the chair uh, for the opportunity to present uh, in the uh, briefing for the committee. But uh, can I take this opportunity to communicate with uh, Chairman Nograles of the Civil Service Commission regarding examinations? Because uh, we always hear or read about the concept of whole of government approach. And in the name of, uh, in the field of examinations, the PRC, the CSC, and the Supreme Court have common interests as far as uh, uh, maybe migrating to computer based license examination. But uh, among us three, uh, Chairman Nograles, uh, I think the Supreme Court has uh, advanced because they gave the last uh, license of examination. Uh, computer-based, and they utilized a foreign-based uh, service provider, ExamSoft, uh, which uh, presented to us uh, a number of times, but we had problems as far as the procurement is concerned, procurement of a foreign service provider. 
and we don't know how uh, Supreme Court did it. But we will have a scheduled discussion with uh, uh, the Supreme Court justice in charge of next year's uh, bar. So I, if uh, Chairman Nograles is willing, we can collaborate on uh, or share experiences at least so that we can learn from each other. Uh, this is based on the concept of a uh, whole of government approach uh, under the uh, sponsorship or uh, leadership of uh, Chairman uh, Senator Bong Revilla. Kaya yeah, maganda tulong tulong. That's right. Yes po. Yan lang po ang uh, last words po. Thank you. Okay. So CSC PRC, uh, you have my assurance, no? Uh, trust that this committee will uh, be your ally in pushing pushing for and adv advocating uh, meaningful and timely legislative measures. It is this uh, representation's hope that we will work hand in hand in the enactment of laws that uh, will serve the greater good of our hardworking civil 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 servants and uh, our government. So, yeah, so... So, wala na tayong, ano, there being no other matters to discuss, our, our meeting is now adjourned. Thank you very much, Ma'am Lisada.